Now, as you can see here, we got teal, yellow, orange, orange, yellow, yellow, orange, 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 and orange. And we got different, see that? We got kind of different shades of orange going on. We got a little bit of different levels of yellow. And this teal is kind of interesting. The teal is quite a bit darker than I expected. So what we're going to do for the boxcar test is we're going to do two of these boxcars. We're going to do three of them, actually. So I've got three of my primer white. I think we're going to go ahead. We're going to do the gray like we did on this. And then we're going to use this green shade on them. Since it's pretty clear we can work in yellow and orange. I don't think there's any disputing that we already know how to do yellow and we know how to do orange. But this one is a little tougher. Uh, it's got a, got a cool effect. Now when I'm looking at it with my eyes, it does not look as bright as it does on, on the camera here. It looks much grayer just by looking at it. But I can see on the camera here, I mean, it really stands out quite a bit. So I don't know what that's all about. But let's, uh, this is going to be our method. We're going to go with this. We're going to, we're going to base coat with gray. Then we're going to gloss coat. Then we're going to decal. Then we're going to green shade. And then we are going to clear coat. Probably with a matte finish. I don't remember what these are colored with. I don't think, I think this might be a satin finish. So I'm saying what we'll, what we'll do is, our box cars like this, we'll try one dull and we'll try one satin, see what we like better. That's where we'll go with that. We are ready to begin. So first up, I have constructed a wet palette. So I took my Tupperware sandwich box. Actually, it's probably not. It's Betty Crocker from the dollar store. There are four layers of paper towels cut out to fit this, and there is a piece of baking parchment paper over the top. Spent about two hours watching YouTube painters talk about wet palette. And I would go to the store and get a sponge pad, but everybody says if you just like your first time, four layers of paper towel, you'd be good to go. In the future, you can you fill this up with sponges. And I saw one guy who had a really good idea. He said this is the best of all. He because what they don't like to do is dip over like this. So the ones you buy are very low to the ground. What he did was he filled his almost to the top with sponge and he put it on there and put a ton of water in there and he said that was really really good but 100% of all the painters I watched do this said using this wet palette will change your painting skills now I think brush painting like by model railroaders has that's kind of that's that's fallen down in recent years. Um, other than structures, you you don't usually hear about people painting a boxcar by hand like we're going to do right now. When I was coming up, you know, when I was a kid, an airbrush cost a lot of money, and people didn't just have those. So you learned back then to use the Floquill Silver Fox brush and the. Full quilt and scale coat paints on top of Rust Oleum Gray Auto Primer, and you would achieve an excellent, an excellent uh, work there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, this is a base paint. We're going to do gray because our ultimate effect is going to be kind of a teal boxcar. 
All right, now obviously I gotta stir this up. This is the brush I'm gonna use. It's a, it's a cheap brush with the white bristles, very soft. Um, that's as close as the brush I've found to the old Silver Fox brush that I used to use way back when that, uh, that did me so well for so many years. So I'm gonna stir this paint up, get this back in what they call these pots. Yeah, it's pretty lumpy. I'm gonna give it a good stir, give it a good mixing. These base colors are, they're kind of a liquid powder and they're very thick, they're very lumpy. And they're supposed to be, because uh, they are meant to be thinned and using this wet palette, we're gonna thin it. Okay, there's a very slow train coming, as you can hear. All right, I got it mixed up pretty good here. I could probably do better and later I could put something on my Dremel, get it in there and really mix it up good. It's starting to look all right. So let's take some of this. I probably can get enough. You don't need a lot. I'm gonna put it on the white palette. See if I can get it. Yeah, I could turn around and use a brush, but then I got another brush to clean, and I only need a little bit of paint. And I think that's about all I need right there. That's all I'm going to use to start. If I need more, I'll get more out. These things you got to, the top is attached. Make sure you push it down all the way. Sometimes it doesn't go down in the backside, and then you've got an open, an open bottle, an open pot, it dries up. All right, next, right here, I've got a paper towel for just cleaning up stuff and I've got a little cup of 91% alcohol for in case I need to clean something up. Alright, so now I've got my wet palette, got my brush, so let's see if you can look in here. If I take this and I start kind of uh, flattening it down on my wet palette. I can still see it's kind of lumpy, but as I, I work it a little bit, yeah, it starts to smooth out. Yeah, so all of these miniature painters using this wet palette, they swear by this thing as this is the game changer. This is what takes you to the next level. We're going to find out if it can take me to the next level. Because normally, I would just throw this stuff in the airbrush, thin it down and spray out a perfect coat. But... We're going to do it their way, by their rules, so we are going to base coat three box cars. Now, I've got the stopwatch here. I need to be able to do this in short order. I've also decided, you, you saw them other ones I did, they were painted one solid color. I'm going to leave the roof white. Um, I'd like it to be silver, but I don't have silver in their type of color. Uh, one of the things I did here, never put a metallic paint into your wet palette because its particles will get underneath and contaminate your your um, paper towels or your sponge. So since I don't have the color to paint this top silver, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it white and paint only the sides and ends. And then we'll, we'll see what happens. What I can do later is when I'm all done with this, I could go back and I could get myself an aluminum roof, kind of like I like to do. Um, I'm not such a big fan of having them all be one color. I like some color running around there. Okay, stopwatch. This stopwatch happens to be a little bit broken. It's two and a half minutes behind. So we're starting at minus two and a half minutes. We are going to start painting three box cars, all the sides, starting now. So let's get to it. So this wet palette. So here's the thing I already know from experience. So doing this is that there are going to be brush strokes. So I'm gonna, I'll start with the ends. If I'm very careful, oh man, is that going on smooth? Okay. This being my 
I, I, I've done this once once on a locomotive now. Wow. Holy, look at that. Smooth. Smooth, man. This is... Okay, I'm rolling along here. Got to pick up the pace, though. I mean, I'd like to say... I want to hit this in 15 minutes, all three of them. Because if I got to show a room full of nitpickers how to do this, better not take too long, because you know how them guys are. It's herding cats. Not gone cat circus is what that is. So let's get into it. I, I know that... Um, Brush strokes are totally forgiven using this this method, but I still I want to have as few as possible. And here's the other thing: I don't gotta be. I don't need perfect coverage. I, I don't have to get into every little nook and cranny with this. I go back to my wet palette. Um, but right now. Okay, in keeping with my assembly line mentality, doing the ends, I should do the ends on all three cars before I move on to the side. I shouldn't do these cars one at a time. And the reason for that is, as you do something, the more times you do that one thing, you get better. And this box car is basically four sides. I should be doing the same side on each one and then switching off so that I'm doing three in a row. Okay, I like it, I like it, I'm doing good. Let's put that one, put that one side, I'm just gonna do the one, I'm gonna do the smooth end on this one. And I'm gonna just knock this out quickly. You know, maybe I don't have this paint thinned as much as I could. And there might be a little bit of brush strokes. But I can already see right now this thing is going to have some character to it. You know, that's more important than being than being perfect. Sometimes you need something that just that you just like. You like it because it's cool. It's cool for the sake of being cool. And we're not going to worry about how... We are going to worry about if this thing is operational. It's got to work, but by operational I mean all three of these are going to have a different number. And so they could go into a card system Okay, now I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do the opposite side on these two. Okay, all three of them have the same, the smooth end done. The A end. The B end, which has the brake wheel. I'm not doing the B ends. Now anyways, where were we? Uh, operational, you be able to put these into an operating system. And the plan is, when, if we do this as a group, there's a bunch of people doing it. And since, since we're going to print the decals, or I'm going to print the decals, every single box car in there will have a different number. Let's go back to this and take a, take a closer look at it and see. We can smooth it just a little bit. And here's what I worry about. The guys that I watch do this, they paint things that are much smaller. They don't usually paint big flat sides like this. All right, so that is good to go on that one. So anyways, we do, everybody does three at a time. I already know from doing those other ones, doing three, you spend the same amount of time whether you're doing three or you're doing one. You just do. And if you do three, you'll do higher quality work. 
based on the fact that the more times you do something, the better you get at it. Oh man, I I have to tell you that I really like I like this. I don't care if you can see a tiny brush stroke in there. That's just it's gonna be okay. We're gonna live. Some of you are gonna blow a gasket. But some of you are going to rediscover the fact that you really liked painting all along. That's my plan. You know, I, I might make this door a different color later, but not yet. Right now, we're now going to go on to, we're going to paint one side of each one. This is the tricky part. <clears throat> I'm guessing I need to paint up and down. Because I'm never going to get a smooth side, except I've got to go along the top. I know that. And if I can make one movement. Oh yeah, that's right. And on this, I'm doing this gray one. I do not have to get perfect coverage. It won't matter if I miss a spot. That is why we have shades. Okay, now here's the thing that's going to trip me up. Should I go smooth and slow or fast and frequent? Okay, if I go too fast, I get bubbles. If I put too much water like I just did, I do get some bubbles. It was way too much water. I picked that water up from the edge of the wet palette, and that was not the best thing to do. But, more importantly, did we get a match? Now, more importantly, should I... I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to dip my brush in the 91% alcohol. The thing is, the paint on the palette is not is not drying. The paint on the top of the brush was drying. And the brush was getting... It wasn't having its smooth bristles. So let's get our smooth bristles back. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's see if we're doing a better job. Let's get in there. And now I'm just I'm just messing it up. It's a good thing we're on base coat. Here's the thing: the base coat is harder. It's easier to mess up, but because you've got the shade coming on later, those mistakes are going to be forgiven. Okay, I am actually used just about used up all the paint that I put onto the wet palette. So we're going to have to reload some paint. Now what they say, the masters of painting that I have watched, so when they're working on a project, they leave their paints on their wet palettes, and the one guy said once he gets started, it may take weeks to do the, to do the project he's working on, but because it's on a wet palette, he can just leave his paints and every time he can pick up where he left off. So I would think that if you were doing a structure, a building, and you can definitely use those Walmart craft paints on here. That for sure works. And if you're using those craft paints to detail some of those buildings, you can pick up where you left off with your paints, especially if you were mixing them. Let's pick up right where you left off. All right, I've got some brush strokes on this side, <clears throat> and I screwed up a little bit with too much water, and it is time to put more paint on. Shake it up. Usually you can get some paint right out of this thing right here. In fact, you probably get all the paint you need from right there. Now, the other thing about the wet palette is, uh, one guy, his video, actually it was, it was the girl, was talking about the prices of paints. Okay, we're going to leave this box car side and move, go on to the next one. She's talking about the, the wet palette saves you money. And, you know, for most model railroaders, that's not something you think about that much. But, 
the people who use these, some of their paints are, are pretty expensive and they don't like to be wasting them. You know, have you seen those tubes of paint that are more than $20? That's, they're using some of those. Oh, now we're back in business. Now that I've reloaded paint and I've relaxed a little bit. I'm getting better coverage. The only thing I don't want on here is to get globs. I'm okay with brush strokes. It's globs I don't want. I already know what happens to the brush strokes, so I'm okay with those. I am also thinking that if we come in on time on this, I'll paint that door a different color. I've got some really, it's called crack in the skin. It is really, it is pretty ugly green. But since we've got to use some decals that I made a long time ago that I don't like, we got to use these arch coal decals. And I, I do not like arch coal. And they went out of business. But they took a bunch of my money with them. We got to use their decals. They're going to get a crack and skin door. Because they deserve it. They know it. They're going to get it. All right, side done. Okay, now we're speeding up. We're getting, we're getting better. Okay, so I'm going to say that once I've done that top sweep I just did, I need to get a little more paint on. We're picking up the pace. As long as we keep this paint thin, we are going to throw a little caution to the wind. And we're going to throw caution in the wind. We are going to we're going to start speeding up here. Okay, as they say in the military, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, fast is deadly. Practice slow first. And, but you practice the steps perfectly. And you do them a few times. They become smooth, and then you start picking up the pace. And pretty soon, you can move perfectly, but extra fast. We're going to leave those doors and think about Yeah, we're going to need... That's right, we don't want to do these doors. Okay, got three sides done. Get a lot of brush strokes on that. Most of you guys would just freak out if you had a box car that had brush strokes like that this one uh, we're gonna live with it we're just gonna say leave it and see how it turns out like I said you don't have to be perfect with this but you do have to be complete means you got to get it done So we can see the brush strokes, but I can just tell by the, the feel of this paint and the look at it, and if I can get a little reflection on it, the paint is, is a very thin layer. So I like that. That means we're going to be able to work with this. I think if I did something... When I find a balance on my wet palette of how to get the right amount of water onto my brush, I notice that brush strokes will disappear and you get the, the super smooth. Remember how you used to take 
the old silver fox brush and you would basically take the scale coat paint on it and then touch it to the Rust-Oleum Gray Auto Primer and it would just kind of soak in around. You didn't have to brush much. You mostly just left it. Okay, we got that guy's got both sides done. Alright, so now let's go ahead and we're going to detail this guy out first. We're going to hit the ladder. And we're going to hit this ladder. I'm going to hit all these details before I go for the smooth side. Maybe I'm learning. Okay, now we're going to hit the smooth stuff. One thing I need to watch out for now is bubbles. I can't go so fast that I get bubbles. actually see strokes under strokes when I go over the spots that I did first. Is that going to matter? And I already know the answer to that question is no, it is not going to matter. It is not going to matter in the scheme of things. Two sides done. I think edging the top first was the right way to go. We're going to be right on schedule and be out of paint when we get this one done. We're going to be out of paint when we get this one done. We're going to use everything that we put out here. And that, that's it. We don't have anything left on the wet palette. Okay. One, two, three, four, done. Go back to this one. All the way around, done. Go back to this one. All the way around, done. Let's hit that stopwatch. What do we got? Okay, it says 17. Okay, we spent 20 minutes messing around. We spent 20 minutes painting them, getting the gray on there. To improve that time, I think what we would do one, we would put a little more paint in the palette. Take that stuff out. Two, I should have over here a little cup of, of distilled water. And so we're going to do a bonus thing. I'm going to paint those doors green. Okay, so if we were in the clinic right now, we were doing this as a group. 
I should say that we should double that time to 40 minutes is what it'll take those guys. However, I believe I could crack the whip and get them down to 30 minutes if I made everybody do it one at a time. We all did one together one at a time. We've got a grand total of 12 sides to do. Or we do three at a time. We'll go the we'll say we'll do the A ends, everybody stop. We do the B ends, everybody stop. We'll do side one, everybody stop. We'll do side two, everybody stop. Say ten minutes each. That's four things. That's like forty minutes. So I said doubling it. But in this first session, that's all we got to do because the next step that we do in this is we are going to, in class, we, we would clear coat these, which will be done outside of the, of the clinic, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's, let's do a bonus. Let me set up here and see if I can do this, these doors and do them faster and I'm, I'm going to add some distilled water here. All right. I'm going to use a smaller brush. But I'm gonna, again, it's going to be one of these white ones. I got a pack of these, like five bucks at Michael's or somewhere. You make these doors crack and skin. This is an army painter paint. It is comparable to the Citadel paint that we we're using. But since I don't I don't have a contrasting color in the Citadel paint, I'm, I'm gonna use this. And we're gonna time this one, these doors, and I don't know what we would do. If we were doing this, this could be an extracurricular thing someone could do outside the clinic. If they didn't have time, just do the whole thing gray, be done, and off you go. And then behind the scenes, get clear coated. But I'm going to do these doors and crack and skin. So I'm going to put a little bit on my wet palette. I don't know how much I'm going to need, but I'm going to put a drop there. That's how much. If you can see that, that is how much I put on there. That's probably way too much. I'm guessing that's like 10 times of what I really need. Okay, now I also put over here. A little bit of distilled water, a little cup to wet my brush. All right, so let's start pulling some of this cracking skin on the palette, thinning them out a little bit. Oh yeah, the way I watch them do it is they would pull it out here onto the parchment from the pile, and that would thin it, and it stays thinned right there. All right. Start our stopwatch here. See how long this is going to take. Okay. Let's do door one. Who knows what a cracking skin door is going to look like. It's going to be different. But I'm okay with that because I like my rolling stock to be different. And as you know, I'm definitely not a prototype monitor. So, when people ask me what kind of trains you're working on, what kind of trains you bring down here. I said, oh, I'll bring some red ones, some blue ones, some green ones, yellow ones. That's the kind of trains I bring. Like, no, what kind are they? Well, well, they're red, blue, and yellow. I'm just messing with people. All right, door one. Cracking skin door one.
cracking skin. I forgot why I got this cracking skin. I was going to do something with it. I do not remember what. And I got it because it was because it was loud. And you gotta have some loud colors. Do you know what's what's good about loud colors and operations? It makes the car easy to find in the yard. You know how frustrating it is when every single car box car is box car red and they don't have big logos on them or they're box car red and they're all the same road and you gotta figure out which one's which and somebody's waiting on you there's an outdoor too somebody's waiting on you to get that figured out so I do like I like to mix it up a bit Yeah, this, well, this cracking skin is kind of loud. My guess is that when we shade it, it could be turned super dark, which I guess is okay. I don't see any reason we can't have a super dark door. Yeah, and I missed a spot, and I, or, and I didn't miss a spot, I went over. Okay, that's one whole side done. Let's, let's, let's get to work here. Let's see if we can bust this out quickly. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get the edge, because that seems to be the hardest part. If I can get all the edges. Maybe I can speed up. Kraken skin's making me think that an entire boxcar should be made Kraken skin. Okay, that one is completely done. Next up, let's do that again. Let's just do the edges. Okay. Yes, this boxcar will definitely never pass close inspection, and nobody's going to be winning any awards for these. But fortunately, we're going to award each other is what we're going to do. One, we're going to, we're going to reward each other in a couple ways by doing this. Okay, the first way is everybody gets, everybody gets one take home for their layout. Okay, so that's that's good in and of itself. But number two, everybody who's in there is doing one, your your box car number two. You're gonna give it, well, by lottery. You're gonna ran, it's gonna be randomly given to another person, and you are gonna get one that they made. And we're gonna. I haven't figured out yet. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign them. We're actually gonna use a special up. Uh, uh, artist pen and we're gonna put like our names on them somehow or a symbol or something that uh, that you did it and everyone will have a different number and so then you're gonna exchange them and long ago that was a that was a thing guys had their railroads with their own logos on it. They used to exchange them and then people kind of, you know, it only takes a couple people and they ruin that program and people quit doing it. Okay, but this way we can do it. We can do it and we will know in advance the quality. Hey, we're done. Stop the watch. Four minutes plus the minus two and a half minutes that we started on. Six and a half minutes for doors. I like it. 
so you could stay after class, make your doors a different color if you wanted to. And of course, we've got a ton of paint left over. What should we do with it? What do we do with all that paint? All right, I just had a very, a very evil thought of what I might want to do with this paint. This is going off the reservation. This is definitely we're going to go off the reservation. We are we we're, we're doing it. Just for the practice, we're doing it. You know what I'm going to do, right? We're even going to time it. You guys know exactly where I'm going with this. Let's break out that big brush again. Yes, we are going to crack and skin the roofs. Remember when I said I didn't have a color for it? Well, I got one on the palette right now. We're going for it. We're making the roofs crack and skin. Why? I don't know why. Because. Because nobody ever did it before. So we're doing it. No one's done it. We're going to do it. I mean, what's the fun in doing something everybody else has done? Here we go. And boom, away we go. Let's get to crack and skin. Let's pull it out onto the palette. I think my hand is kind of in the way. You know, I'm not getting to see the palette. How about that's a little better? All right, let's see if we can do this roof. Yes, a very light Kraken skin coat. I don't know what's going to happen from this. I just don't. I have no idea where, where this is going to go. What I do know is this thing is going to be crazy. And if you are a prototype model, this is not for you. This is art. May not be very good art, but it is art. It may be obscure, abstract. In fact, it could be entirely... Probably most of you, it's, it's repulsive. Well, you know one thing it's not? It's not in the uncanny valley, I'll tell you that much. Those of you who do not know about the uncanny valley, if you are a modeler or an artist, the uncanny valley is something that you want to contemplate. What is it? Well, on the graph, that's one. That's one done. On the graph, Starts up here, comes down, way down here, and then it goes back up and over here. Okay, so let's see that again. Coming across, go down, go up, and back. That's that that is a mathematical graph of the uncanny valley. The uncanny valley is when if you make something super real, you start going down into that valley. Farther down you get, and the more real it gets, the more repulsive to the human eye it becomes. People do not like fake people. Not just fake people in real life. People are repulsed by things that are realistically fake and unreal. People find wax figures very creepy. That's what appeals to them is the fact that they're creepy, but they find them really creepy. And that's why sometimes you get excellent modeling that is perfect in scale in every way, but it doesn't have any life to it. If you've ever seen the movie, I think it's like Final Fantasy VII, where they used, it's animated, but it's computer animated, and you can see like the hairs on people's faces moving when they talk. And the people in it are very creepy. And animators learned a lot from that movie. And one of the things they learned was you don't do that anymore. You quit making people so real. If you've seen Blade Runner 2049, when they bring out the girl, she is very real. But that is a CGI thing. And to make her believable, one you are told, you know from the story, that she is not a real person. 
so you're amazed at how real she looks. And that is knowing the rules and then breaking them. If you're a photographer, especially if you photograph people, you know that you don't break the rules unless you can demonstrate that you know them. And then your art is all about breaking the rules in a clever way that shows you are aware of the rules and, and you're breaking them on purpose. If you break them because you don't know the rules, then people look at your stuff and think, oh, you're just an amateur. You're worse than an amateur. You're a charlatan. So that's why we think about Uncanny Valley. So when I make something like this, this box car, it's going to be outrageous. It is going to be outrageous. You're going to be able to see the modeling in it if you look up close to it. When you're standing three feet back from it, it's my intention that this draws you in a little bit. There will be something about it that you will find just a little bit irresistible. All right, we've got all the roofs painted. There are roof walks for these. I have not yet decided if I want to use them. Time check. Okay, we are at two, five minutes exactly. All right, so if you want to stay after class, do something cool to your roof, you could also do that. So we have confirmed. So what did we come up with then? It took me about 20 minutes to do the sides. And now it's, I was just getting started and I didn't know what I was doing. So we're saying that in a large group, let's double that time. 40 minutes. Assuming we are allotted an hour, that gives us 20 minutes to construct the wet pallet. And it gives us... Like, we're, we're going to have to talk about what we're doing while we're doing it. You know, say, okay, here's class, get, get started, and we'll, we'll talk as we go. And we'll learn as we go. I got a ton of green paint left. Look at all that green paint I got left. Tons of it. I could put a second coat on here if I wanted to. Maybe I will. I don't have to. In fact, no, no, no let's not. Let's not. This is experimental, so we're going to experiment. I don't know what I'm going to do with all that green paint, though. I think I'm going to... I might wipe it up. Okay, so what I got to do now is I got a clear coat. And I figured that's going to take 15 minutes. We're going to find out, though. Then we will do some decals. Okay, here they are drying. Got my fan blowing on them. I'm low. They're already dry. Good to go. They've been here like three minutes. And they are dry. So now, I'm going to gloss coat them. And we're we'll gloss coat them because we're going to do decals. But, uh, so the color, it doesn't stand out a lot. It does a little bit, but it ain't huge. So it's going to be interesting to see. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to find out though.